In this section, in this video, we'll just look at simply evaluating functions. So here's the different examples I'll be doing, and also these examples, uh, along with exercise 36. Okay. So let's begin. F of x equals three minus x. What I like to always write down is f of parentheses for fun. F of an empty parenthesis would be 3 minus empty parenthesis, okay? So in place of x, we can always put a parenthesis, and that really helps us because then we can just use what we learned in Chapter 2 to uh, figure everything out. So F of parenthesis is 3 minus parenthesis, okay? So F of 4, for example, where would the 4 go? goes in the parenthesis, so you have 3 minus 4 and 3 minus 4 is negative 1, okay? So if you were getting f of negative 2, uh, again, it's 3 minus parenthesis, because wherever you see x, you put parenthesis. And that really helps us with the negatives, because you see this negative 2 goes in the parentheses, and now you have two negatives, 3 minus negative 2, which makes plus plus, doesn't it? Makes plus plus which is 5, okay? So go ahead yourself and calculate f of negative 3. Now f of x is 3 minus x, so f of negative 3 would be 3 minus parenthesis, or 3 minus negative 3, right? And negative negative makes plus plus, 3 and 3 is 6. And again, please do all of these by hand without a calculator. Do them mentally. You need to know mental arithmetic really well to do well in algebra, okay? Guaranteed fact. So f of x equals x squared. Let's do this. f of parentheses, what would that be? f of x is x squared, so f of parentheses would be parentheses squared. So write down again, f of parentheses is parentheses squared. So f of 3 would be 3 all squared, and 3 all squared is 3 times 3, parentheses times parentheses, 3 times 3, which of course is 9, right? So again, f of parentheses equals parentheses squared, doesn't it? So what is f of negative 3? It's negative 3 in parentheses squared. And that's, again, why we always use parentheses to deal with these negative numbers. It helps here. It helps here also. Um, now, when we see this, we know, oh, the negative is contained in parentheses. The squared is beside the parentheses. So that's parentheses times parentheses, negative 3 times negative 3. And again, the answer is positive 9. So it's equals positive 9, okay? Um, go ahead and get f of negative 4. f of x is x squared, so f of negative 4 is parentheses squared. In the parentheses, put negative 4. So that makes, again, negative 4 times negative 4. Negative times negative positive, 16, okay? How about this one then? g of x is negative 4 times x squared. So straight away, write down g of parentheses. What would that be? The, if the input was just an empty parenthesis, the output would be negative 4 times the input squared, the parentheses squared. So write it down again. g of a parenthesis would be negative 4 times the parentheses squared. So if the input was um, 5, that would be negative 4 times 5 squared. Now, our work on the other section really helps us because we need to remember our order of operations. PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What do we do first? Multiply 4 times 5 or do we square it? We apply the exponent, don't we? Exponents come first and then you multiply, okay? So the exponent on the 5 turns out into a 25. So you have negative 4 times 25, negative 100. Or you can think of it this way. It's negative 4 times 5 times 5, right? 
which is negative 20 times 5, negative 100. Okay? So let's go ahead and figure out G of, um, G of parentheses is what? Write it down. It's negative 4 times parentheses squared. So G of negative 3, the negative 3 would go in for X in parentheses. The squared touches that, so that's parentheses times parentheses, negative 3 times negative 3. Negative 4 is on the outside. Now I multiply these and I, I'll get the answer. Negative 4 times 3, positive 12. 12 times negative 3 is negative 36, okay? So that's how we calculate those. So if, again, if g of x is negative 4x squared, go ahead and calculate g of negative 1. Can you do that? Press pause on the uh, screen on the video and, and give it and try it. That would be negative four, and in parentheses negative one squared. And again, remember your order of operations. We've got to do the squared first, then multiply. Okay, so we've got to apply the exponents first, then multiply. So that's negative four, and you know you can just think it out as one, or you can go negative one times negative one, apply the exponent that way, and you get negative four times one which is negative 4, okay? All right, let's have a look at h of x equals negative x squared. Write down what would h of parentheses be equal to. h of parentheses, it would just be negative parentheses squared, wouldn't it? So write it down again. h of parentheses equals negative parentheses squared. So if the input was 2, the output would be negative 2 squared. And the question is, what do I do first? Subtract or apply the exponent? Apply the exponent, then subtract, right? Now, the exponent only applies to 2, not the negative. So that's 2 times 2, which is 4, right? And the negative is on the outside. So h of 2 is negative 4. Okay, now figure out h of um, negative uh, 2, for example. Now, it's h of x is negative x squared, so h of negative 2 would be negative parentheses squared. Or, in other words, negative negative 2 squared. And we have the uh, squared on the negative 2, so that's negative 2 times negative 2, and the negative on the outside. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And so the whole, this negative comes down here then, and we just get negative 4 again, just like h of 2 is four, negative 4, h of negative 2 is also negative 4, okay? So h of x equals negative x squared. Can you calculate h of negative 3? And do each step correctly. So press pause and try that. It would be negative parenthesis squared. The input is negative 3, so that goes here inside the parenthesis. The squared applies to the parenthesis, so that's parenthesis times parenthesis. Negative 3 times negative 3. And this negative sign stays out here. Now negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9, and the negative th sign stays here, so we have h of negative 3 is equal to negative 9, and that is the answer, okay? Now let's take a look at these two examples. If we had g of x equals negative 7x minus x squared, write down what would this be? g of an empty parenthesis. If your input was just an empty parenthesis, where would, what, would you, what would the output be? Wouldn't it be negative 7 times parenthesis minus parenthesis squared? So write it down again. That's true. G of an, any input would be negative 7 times that input minus that input squared. And that's what it would be. So if the input was 2, the output would be negative 7 times 2 minus 2 squared, which is negative 7 times 2 is negative 14 minus and then square the 2, that makes 4. Or you could just do this, 2 times 2, okay? 
So that's negative 14 minus, and again, we've got to multiply before we subtract. We can't go 14 minus 2 is 12. You've got to remember your order of operations, PEMDAS, because we must multiply and then subtract. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4, and negative 14 minus 4. If you're in debt 14, you subtract 4, you're in debt 18, so negative 18. Or you can think of it this way, that's negative 14 plus negative 4, negative 18, okay? So let's see if we can, you can calculate g of um, negative 2. What would that be? g of negative 2. g of x is negative 7x minus x squared. So g of uh, anything is negative 7 times the input minus the input squared. The input happens to be negative 2. So we put negative 2 here and here, right? Negative 7 times negative 2, positive 14. Now we've got to write down this subtract sign and apply the exponent. That's negative 2 times negative 2. We've got to multiply before we subtract, so do that later. But for now, multiply these, and that gives positive 4. So the whole thing is 10. So we find that g of negative 2 is, in fact, positive 10, where g of positive 2 was negative 18. So, I mean, they're not always going to be the same thing. They might be different. It depends on the function. Let's have a look at this. h of x equals x squared minus 2x. That's exercise 36. Write down h of 4. Well, it's the input squared minus 2 times the input. The input is 4, so put 4 here and here. 4 all squared, that's uh, simply 4 times 4, which is 16. Minus 8, 16 minus 8, of course, is just 8. So now you calculate h of negative 4. h of x is x squared minus 2x. h of anything is the input squared minus 2 times the input. So negative 4 all squared minus 2 times negative 4. That's negative 4 times negative 4 minus 2 times negative 4. That's what we have. Negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16. Minus 2 times negative 4. You could think of that subtraction as plus negative. So it's plus negative 2 times negative 4, plus 8. 16 plus 8 is 24. So h of negative 4 gives us 24. All right?